Brother Branham says, in perfect strength by perfect weakness, he said, the greatest enemy I got is William Branham. I want to ask you, who was Jesus' enemy in the Garden of Gethsemane? And of course, you know, the devil's there. He's always there. But I'm just reading through the scriptures. Jesus wasn't born in sin. He wasn't hybrid. Brother Branham said, the greatest enemy I got is William Branham. Brother Branham didn't say the devil. If Jesus had to battle out self-will, why? Because Lucifer said, I will. Don't think what we're going through here isn't connected with that. What we're going through here is connected, directly connected with what happened there. And Lucifer said, I will. Eve said, I will. Adam said, I will. But Jesus says, not my will. But it wasn't easy, friends. That's the point. When Jesus said, not my will, it wasn't an easy decision. It wasn't easy. It wasn't happy. He wasn't popping chewing gum, talking to his disciples, laid out under a tree and said, yep, I think I'll do that. It came with agony and trouble in spirit and great sorrow and heaviness in his spirit. And if the Son of God had to suffer that way to make that choice to fully surrender and die out, what do you think it's going to be like for us? It's not. That's why Brother Branham said when in, in these meetings, he said, I was watching uh, a, a religious service, amen, and they had the altar call, and they went up there popping chewing gum and punching each other in the arm, amen, and, and going up and wrestling with each other. He said, that's not the way to come. You come dead. You come to die. You come to surrender all. It's not a stand to your feet and repeat after me. Okay, now you're safe. No, it's a, it's a wallowing it out. It's a wrestling it out and saying, I'm tired of my own life. I'm tired of my own way. I want to surrender to him. It's not a, I think I'll go to church today. And it's not a, I think I'll decide I'll be a Christian because that looks pretty nice. It's not that at all. It's coming down to the fact that you realize that there's rottenness inside of me and I can't overcome me. There's rottenness, filthiness inside of me, and no matter how much I try to do right, I can't do right. I need something that can clean out me, and the only thing that can clean out me is him. I've got to have him, not because it's a good choice, not because it's a good option, because it's the only choice. I've got to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, not so I can have power, so not so I can be excited, so that I can actually live with myself. Because the greatest enemy I got is not the person who's causing me problems. Next time you say, that guy at work, oh my goodness, he's really, he's a problem for me. It's not the guy at work. I got a neighbor, he's really, it's not the neighbor. It's you. I got a son or a daughter, I got a spouse. If you knew my husband, the problem's not your husband. The problem's not your wife. The problem's the one looking you in the mirror. (laughs) It's the truth across the board. This person's giving me so much trouble. This person, that person, if you were dead to self, that person couldn't bother you. Amen? Amen? Jesus, he could walk through all of the heretics. I mean, he could walk through all of the religious leaders, amen, and, and they didn't disrupt him. He would tell them an answer to their question, you know, why this and why that? He said, because you have your father, you're the devil. He was pretty honest, but it didn't knock him off course. It didn't derail him from what he was supposed to do. It didn't stop him, amen, from loving. It didn't stop him from serving. It didn't stop him from telling the truth. Jesus' problem, amen, wasn't the Pharisees. I mean, that was just the enemy trying to distract him. That was the enemy trying to get him off course. When he come down to it, when Jesus had to, when he was heavy and sorrowful and wrestling out in Gethsemane, what he was overcoming was self-will. Wanting to stay with his disciples, wanting to bypass Calvary. But he had to wrestle it out till he could say, 
Lord, I love that scripture in Mark. Father, you can do all things. <laughs> I've prayed that. I've prayed that. I'm standing right in the face of situation. I absolutely can't change, and it's right there. And you still say, Father, you can do all things. And he doesn't say nothing back. Father, you can make this go away like that. Just, I've, I've even prayed before. I said, if you just twitch your finger, it'll all be over. Nothing. Because God was not interested in delivering me from my trouble. God was interested in delivering me from me. If we can get delivered from self, I'm telling you, nothing is impossible. If we could get delivered from self, nothing is impossible. If Brother Bram said, one man fully surrendered in God's hand is enough to shake the whole world. What if he could get a body of believers? What if he could get a people on this planet fully surrendered and totally in his hand? Amen. What would it just shaking be like then? You know, we would avoid Gethsemane. I can tell you right now today, I would like to bypass Gethsemane. But there's another part of me, like Jesus, for the glory that lay ahead, he endured the Christ, the cross, despising the shame. There's something else inside of us, friends, that say, you know what? I don't want to go through Gethsemane. You know what? I don't want to suffer. I don't want to face temptation. But if I got to pass through that to get there, then I'll pass through that. What is that? It's something in us pulling us back home. It's something in us pulling us to our Father. It's the God part inside the man part. Something greater than us.